Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our beginner level character course on how to create this little monster game character in Blender, and then export it into the Unity game engine. In this second part, we will join the separate objects of our rough block out together, and then use the sculpting tools to add in some details. This course is a nine part series. Link to the playlist should be above, or below, or to the side if you want to jump around. Anyways, let's get started. So to start, let's join the objects of our block out together. I'm going to shift select the toes, foot, legs, fingers, arms, and horns together. Then over to the modifier panel on the right, we're going to make use of the modifier tools add-on we enabled in part one, and click this little apply all button to apply all the mirror modifiers on all of the objects we just selected. Okay, so now the mirror modifiers are all applied. Let's join all of the objects together. Shift select his grain silo of a body, and then press control J to join all of the selected objects together. You'll notice on the right all of the separate objects now show as one in the right side layer panel. Just as a quick aside, when I tab into edit mode you'll see the objects are all kind of overlapping and inside of each other and have different topologies going on. When sculpting we generally want everything to be one piece with uniform topology. We can achieve this by using the voxel remesh function. Control tabbing into sculpt mode, you may notice you have a warning down here in the bottom right about non-uniform scale, which can cause problems when sculpting. Sometimes I have found that it can cause very weird results. To fix this, just control tab back into object mode. Here on the object properties tab you'll see the scale and the x, y, and z are all different or non-uniform. Then press control A and select all transforms. And you can see the location, rotation, and scale were all reset to zero, and are thus uniform once again. This makes Blender a little bit happier when we're sculpting. Okay, so now that we have all the separate objects joined together, let's use the voxel remesh function to smooth everything out and give it a uniform topology. If I control tab into edit mode, you can see as before, the topology is all different. We have small polygons, or voxels, here, and then really big ones that are stretched out like this one. If I control tab into sculpt mode, then go up to the remesh menu and click on the little eyedropper here and then click where the big stretched voxel is. You can see the voxel size is 4.42 meters. Then if I eyedrop here on the smaller one, the voxel size as you can see is much smaller at 0.81. So obviously right now the voxel size is not uniform throughout the model and at some parts it's quite large. The smaller the voxel size, the more detail we can sculpt with. So you can see that when I lower the voxel size from 0.8 to 0.2, and then press the remesh button, tab back into edit mode, we have a much denser object that as I zoom in has a uniform topology of voxels at a size of 0.2 meters. To see how this translates to sculpting detail, when I control Z to go back to the original non-uniform topology, and in sculpt mode select the sculpt draw brush for instance. When I try and sculpt it is very pixelated and blocky. We want to add detail right now so we need to lower the voxel size. When I lower the voxel size to 0.2 meters as before and then press remesh. Now when I use that same brush it is way more detailed. If you are in Blender version 2.9 you can adjust the voxel size a little quicker by pressing shift R. And then instead of pressing the remesh button, you can use the shortcut Control R to perform the voxel remesh. Okay, so now our objects are all joined together and remesh to have the same uniform topology of 0.15 meters throughout, which is great. But it still looks a little blocky and there are sharp creases and artifacts where the objects intersected. You can smooth it out a couple of different ways. The first, quickest, and most uniform method is to use the mesh filter function here. And then go up to the filter type here and select smooth. Now when you left click and pull to the right in the viewport, it will smooth the whole model uniformly. You can also select the smooth brush here, pretty self-explanatory, just left click and move the brush over the model and it should smooth wherever you move it. Or the method I use the most is just select any brush you want, here I'll select the clay strips brush for instance, and then hold shift as I left click and move the brush over the model. Holding shift with any sculpting brush basically turns it into the smooth brush. I use this shortcut a lot when I sculpt. This time I'm just going to go with the mesh filter method. And then let's go in and use the shift method to do a little bit of cleanup. You 
can change the size of the brush by pressing F on your keyboard or press up here. You can change the strength of the brush by pressing Shift F on your keyboard as well or press up here. Then you can smooth over the joints if you'd like. Once you're happy with the smoothness of your model, let's move on to sculpting in some details. I'm going to start by selecting the draw brush up here. You'll notice as I left click and move the brush over the model, it basically draws a raised line. If I hold control, however, you'll notice it basically inverts the brush and we get an indented line. I'm going to hold control to then dig out some eye sockets. The topology is a little bit stretched out in the hole we just dug out. So let's press Ctrl R to remesh the model again at the voxel size we set earlier. This will retopologize our model so the stretched out voxels in the eye socket are once again uniform with the rest of the model. Then some shift smoothing. Now for the mouth, I'm going to use the mask tool here. Shift F to increase the strength to 1. And then I'm going to draw in an open mouth shape. The black part we are painting will be masked off from our sculpting brush. When I select the deform brush, you'll notice as I push and pull the model around, the black part we just painted remains unaffected. So we'll use this to our advantage in making our mouth. Let's press Ctrl I to invert our mask. Now the part we just painted is the only part that will be affected by our sculpting brushes. To dig out the mouth, you can use the mesh filter tool again. But this time, select the Inflate Filter type at the top. Then you can left-click and pull to the left in the viewport to inflate or deflate. And finally, you can just use the Deform or Grab Brush and pull it in like this. I'm going to select the Draw Brush now, and like before, I'm going to hold Control to dig out a throat for where we'll put the tongue. Then Control R to remesh and clean up the topology a little bit since it got a little stretched there. And then some smoothing by holding Shift. Now let's sculpt in a brow bone for the eyebrows. Shift F to take the strength to 1. Control R and then Shift to smooth. Now I'm going to sculpt in some very subtle bone structure from the brow bone back towards the horn. Then hold Control to invert it and dig it out a bit on the forehead. Then some more for a sort of cheekbone. Then Control R and Shift to smooth. Now with the deform or grab brush, pulling the mouth corners back a bit. A little more on the bottom lip. And then some more for the chin. Then you guessed it, Control R and Shift Smooth. I do that constantly throughout the model. For the hands, I'm going to hold Control to dig out and flatten an area for the palm. Control R and Shift to Smooth going to be doing this a lot throughout the model. Here I'm using the scrape brush to flatten out the front of the fingers and palm a little bit. Then for the back of the hand, back to the clay strips brush and sculpting in some knuckles.
A powerful tool I like to use a lot when sculpting are the box and lasso masks. To access them, you can click up here in the mask menu. Or for the box mask, you can just press B on your keyboard. Then I'm going to draw a box along the bottom of the feet to flatten out the soles so they sit better on the ground. If you don't see anything happen, it could be that you have the mask overlay turned off. So you might want to check up here just in case. The mask tool will also not appear if you have a mirror modifier on your model as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, so with the bottom of the feet masked off, you can go back up to the mask menu and select mask slice and fill holes. So this cut off the masked part and then filled in the resulting hole with geometry. It often is very stretched out geometry. So what I like to do is then press control R to remesh. This also coincidentally clears the sculpt mask at the same time. You can also clear sculpt masks with Alt M. For the horns, let's use the lasso mask this time. Up to the mask menu and you can select it here or just press Shift Control and left mouse button to draw in your shape. Then up to the mask menu again, but this time I'm going to select mask slice to new object. This will cut off the masked off part and turn it into its own object called mesh, as you can see over on the right. I want to edit the horns and to make it easier, I'm going to add in a mirror modifier instead of working on each one individually. So tabbing into edit mode, hover your cursor over one of the horns and then press L on your keyboard. This will select all the vertices that are linked. Then press X for the delete menu and select vertices. Now that horn is gone. Now over to the modifier panel on the right. I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. A to select all the vertices and then S to scale it down a bit. Then G to move it in a bit like this to sort of inset it into the body. Okay, now for some cleanup, tab into sculpt mode, forward slash on your keyboard for local view, which will temporarily hide everything else, then shift R and control R to remesh, and then shift to smooth and clean up the topology a bit, no surprise there. Forward slash again to back out a local view. Now selecting the body, control R to remesh and then some smoothing. Some minor details, curling the tail a bit with the deform brush. Masking off some fingernails and then using the mesh filter and the inflate filter type to inset them in a bit. Then the same for the toenails, mask them off, mesh filter and the inflate filter type to inset them in a bit. Okay, now let's add in some eyes. Shift A and then select the UV sphere. Position it into place. Then over on the right, let's add in a mirror modifier. And then like in part one, control A and clear transforms to have it mirror over to the other side. Okay, now for some eyebrows. Shift A, Mesh, Single Vertex, and let's select the Add Single Vertex option. Sorry, it kind of got covered there by my camera. Tab into Edit Mode if you aren't already, and make sure you are in Vertex Select Mode, or else you may not see the vertex. Then click over here on the icon that has the little magnet to activate Snapping. Then on the drop-down menu right beside it, let's select Face, Turn Off Project Onto Self, Turn On Project Individual Elements, now when I press G to move the vertex around, you'll see it sticks to the surface of whatever is behind it in our camera view, in this case the body. I'm going to position it on the intersection of the brow bone and then press E on the keyboard to extrude the vertex out and around the brow like this. 
I'll do five vertices along the bottom and then extrude up and out and then back towards the middle, making sure to match the same number of vertices I have along the bottom. Now box select the four vertices here and press F to make a face. Then select the two vertices here, open to the rest, and then press F repeatedly and it will automatically make faces for you all the way down. Now over on the right in the modifier panel, let's first add in a mirror modifier to give us the second eyebrow on the other side. And then let's add in a solidify modifier. Now you can adjust the thickness here to get the look you want. I'm also going to tick the only rim box here as this makes the UV unwrapping and texturing part a little bit easier when we get to it in the later videos. Now they're looking a little bit blocky so let's smooth things out a bit by adding a subdivision surface modifier. And to make it even smoother let's tab into object mode and then up to the object menu and let's select shade smooth. Let's add in some teeth now. I'm going to turn off snap to face for now. Shift A and adding in a cube, then G to move it into place. Adding in a mirror modifier over on the right. And then a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out a bit. I want it to have more rounded edges, so I'm going to tab into edit mode, A to select all the vertices, and then right click and select subdivide. This adds edge loops all over the object. Now control A and clearing transforms to get my mirrored tooth over to the other side. Tab into edit mode, A to select all, and then G to move it in a bit so they meet in the middle. Then with all the vertices selected, shift D to duplicate and create more teeth. Then R and Z to constrain to the Z axis and rotating them in a bit so we get a soft curve to the teeth. For the tongue, it's pretty simple, just shift A and adding in a rounded cube with radius 1 and 8 arc divisions. Then into sculpt mode and just pulling it into the shape of a tongue. Pretty simple for this one. Let your creative juices flow. And then as a last finishing touch, I'm just pulling the brows down a bit over the eyes. And that's all I got for this one. I hope your fun little monster is coming together slowly and you have something roughly like this. I added in some basic colors for fun just to get a sense of what he might look like later. But we'll be painting the colors in in a later video, so I'm going to call part two done. In the next video, in part three, we will retopologize the character so that it is set up for UV unwrapping and texture painting, as well as optimized for the rigging and animation we'll do in the later videos. Shout out to Gabby.pg on Instagram, who finished off the bear tutorial and added in some awesome realistic grass to complete the scene. And it was all made possible by his newly built rig he shared in the Facebook group. Sweet build, man. And to Vixor.art, who definitely wasn't floundering when he finished this awesome spin on the bear tutorial they're calling Fish Out of Water. Great job to both of you guys. Thanks for the shout outs. Feel free to ask questions below. I try and answer all of them, and sometimes I actually help. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook going. Link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I love seeing your guys' stuff. I have Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and Twitch as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.